What do you think? Can I dock here? I think it's worth the try. So we're going to select that as a target. We're going to try and sneak in here. Uh, let's set these, I mean, these antennas are in a pretty bad spot. So let's retract that antenna and that antenna. They're completely unnecessary too. And we're going to try and get in here. We'll see how it goes. So, oh, it's still set as a target. That's good. And we will set this as, a, uh, do, 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 as our control point. Okay, and we'll see if we can. There's a prograde vector. There it is. We're going to come over the top. I'm going to swing around. Oh, I got my doubts. <laughs> but if this doesn't work, what we can do is detach this guy from the asteroid, and that should give us enough maneuvering room. It's really the fact that it's stuck to an asteroid. Oh, there's goo in material. Oh, thank you, Alf. Alf says, uh, Mike Aben, don't forget to retrieve the goo and the materials bay from the... This, uh, the arm one, you are 100% right. It was so long that I, ago that I did that, I completely forgot. But while this thing was in orbit about the sun, it collected a materials bay and a goo, and there is most certainly science there for us to get. So uh, we want that. And I think if we can dock, I believe I should be able to transfer over directly. I hope there's... I just thought about... Do we have... Oh dear, I, oh, 18 slots available. Okay, good. Um, the materials bay takes four slots and the goo takes um, one slot. I'm not sure if I thought of that ahead of time or not, or if that's just what's inside these capsules, but either way. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get there. I want to make sure we don't bump anything. Let's retract this <laughs> and while we're at it let's retract this and retract this everything is pointing towards the uh we'll do our best not to clip this solar panel too okay there we go i think i think the more vulnerable stuff <laughs> RCS. You know what's nice about this solar panel is that marks the dorsal or top part of the ship. So it's really easy for me to see that I need to go this way to go down. This way a bit. A little more. Oh, I so have my doubts. Okay, uh, let's see here. We're gonna come down a little bit. One straight back. So we can probably come down a little bit more. Coming over to top. Time warp again a little bit. And now everybody needs to place their bets on whether we're going to fit in there or not. I honestly, seriously have my doubts. But we're going to find out. It's these guys that are messing me up for sure. But of course if I retract them it completely covers the docking port so... Okay, let's come down a bit more. Aim our camera at the front here. There we go. Feels like I need to come this way. <laughs> oh, this is silly. I just don't want to... Eh, I don't 
know. I don't know. Okay, I'm starting to see the uh, the target icon here. So this little purple target is that docking port. So I need to sort of finagle it towards where my ship icon is right here. Okay, where's that prograde? There we are. That has me going in the right direction. The old question is, is it going to fit? Is she going to fit? That's fitting, my friends. <laughs> it's tight. It's tight, but we're, we're in there. All right. Okay, that worked. That worked out great. Okay, let's open up TAC Fuel Balancer. I don't want to stay connected here too long, and I'm interested in stealing all of your liquid fuel. So, liquid is liquid fuel is this. And you know what's something I did not notice for the absolute longest time with TAC Fuel Balancer? Is if you take a look at these numbers here, these numbers represent vessels. I, I, I think the numbers themselves are arbitrary. But I can tell by the fact that, see here's the Jumbo 64 fuel tank. That's this one. And that's on th number three. So that all of this stuff is vessel number three, and all of these ones here are our nerve one. So all I got to do is go bump, bump, bump. I used to sit there forever trying to figure out. Whoops, not that one. Uh, no, that one too. Absolutely, sorry. I used to figure out forever, uh, like which tanks were on which vessels, but the numbers here, they're all are like that. We are all fueled up, my friends. Oh, and then while we're here, sorry, we are going to transfer all of our data. Transfer data here. We're stealing this materials bay and mystery goo. So now if I highlight it, notice if I move the mouse over these guys that it's the capsule here that's highlighting. So that's telling me we got it all. So there's 70 science, 45, so 115 science, 15 more, 130 science. Meh. Ah, eh, sorry, I guess. Okay, uh, we've got our fuel. Thanks for the reminder to not forget that science, though. And we can now lose this, and we can now undock. Woot. Uh, if I hit the right one. All right. And reset the camera, because I don't know which one I'm on here. There we are. Uh, back away. All right, I am happy guy. Okay, and we can even bring out the, uh, extend that radiator again. <laughs> extend these antennas. They're not necessary, but I'm, I'm a fan of symmetry, I suppose. Okay, uh, all right, uh, we're good. We're done with you, Asteroid. We will be back. Uh, I'm eventually going to want to build some sort of a station around this thing. Um, but we've gotten the science we're going to get out of it. And uh, we got to target ourselves, Lagi. That's our next target. And that won't be hard. Because he's just sitting up here in an orbit pretty close to the same plane of our orbit. We're a difference of three degrees, but it's not like it's a big deal. And I don't know. We're coming up. Actually, this is working out pretty good. We're coming up behind him, and we're in a lower orbit. So... Hopefully we can, this is going to time out okay. I'm just going to push this out. We'll see how this works out. So is this making them come, oh, that makes them come further. Oh, oh I think oh, this burn's going to come up pretty quick. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's see here. Burns can but just a couple minutes. I gotta go fast. Come on. Now 
Now we do have a bit of a plane difference as you can very, very clearly see. I'm gonna have to deal with. First things first, let's just get the timing of this all right. Oh, this might be about as good as it's gonna get. I don't know, according. Uh, uh, where is our? Uh, everything's uh. I'm a great big uh. I think I think I might just do this burn for now and then do a second burn. If I was close to the descending node, I would actually try and see if I could fix this here, but I'm not going to. Uh, but I think, I honestly think I'm not going to get this. Oh, 8.6, 8.7, not eight, that's it. We'll do a burn, born, a, a born. <laughs> we'll do another burn partway there. Okay, that's, I, I, I'm calling it. I'm calling it on this one. There we go. All right. Um, and that burn's coming up in just a couple of minutes. So let's get ourselves... Oh, my gosh. And the vector for our burn is... Well, we kind of got somebody in our way, don't we? So let's <laughs> deal with this first. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on. Uh, we got to... Let's, let's RCS and let's translate downwards. It's downwards on the screen. I suppose that's southwards and then forwards. Get ourselves on the other side of this asteroid because we are in the wrong place. The asteroid's in the wrong place at the wrong time. There we go. And I'm just going to do this burn manually. So I'm going to keep an eye on my closest approaches here. We're about 30 seconds from the burn. It's only a three second burn at full throttle. So I'm going to start the burn early and not go to full throttle. I don't need RCS anymore. And how much we got? Almost 2,300 meters per second of delta V. I'm, oh, I'm feeling okay about getting, I want to get the other Kerbal. That's what this is about. Getting all my Kerbals. I want every Kerbal. Say goodbye to the asteroid, wherever it is. Okay. Watching there, that's about as close as this going to be we're missing by about 7.9 kilometers so what I need now is and it has to do with the fact we're not in the same plane but the place to fix this is actually at about halfway between where you are and where your encounter is add another maneuver this isn't going to be to match the planes this is simply like bring this upwards like so so that the AN is moving towards where you want it to be and we'll watch this too and it might not be the most efficient way to do it but I just want to get the job done in fact I know it's not the most efficient way to do it okay and a little bit of radial that's making it worse it's making it better Turn down the amount here. Radial again. Oh, making it worse. Making it better. Got about a 300 meter difference there at one point. Let's play around a little bit more with the normal. Again, it's just about seeing what's making it better, what's making it worse. So it's a combination of normal and radial and I'm now obsessed with getting it to zero, and I'm not sure I'm gonna do, gonna be able to do that. But that's okay. We're about a hundred meter separation here. Um, we're gonna end up with a little bit of a plane change, but we'll take care of that as we make our rendezvous. All right, and that's coming up in about nine minutes. Uh, let's see here. Get ourselves pointing in the right direction, and then we'll time warp.
This is actually a bigger burn than the burn we just did to move away from the asteroid. Plane changes are always expensive. There we go. Up there. Okay, let's uh, get ourselves to the burn here. I'm so pleased we were able to rob that extra fuel. <laughs> There's still a fair amount of fuel on that thing. That's going to be a nice little supply for whenever I get a station attached to it. So it doesn't look like we're burning in a particularly productive but direction, but that should... We should be able to watch this closest approach here and watch it come down close in on here and again it's just five seconds so I'm gonna start the burn early and then just go to like half throttle there we go and actually once I do this, I should be getting an engineer out to check on my ignitions here. We're down to 11. Okay, uh, 422 meter separation. Let's see if we can dial it in a bit with some RCS. Save ourselves some ignitions. 300 meters. 200 meters. Hundred meters. Oh, about 32 meters, 33 meters, all right. Can't complain about that. And, oh, is this us? There, oh no, that's still our asteroid there. We should be, there, there's Lagie down there. Time warping, get closer to Lagee. He's about 14 minutes away. Lagee has been out here for a long, long time. <laughs> here, I can time more faster. Come on. We're getting there with a funny path. I can tell that. Okay, we're about three minutes away. Relative velocity is only 33 meters per second, so it's not going to take too much to bring us to a stop and get closer. Is there some talk about my asteroid sample? That it, Can you do it in more than one... Oh, it does say asteroid sample moon space low. Ah, I'm seeing this conversation in the chat talking about the biome for the asteroid. I did not know that you can take the asteroid to different places and that's different amounts of science. That's about the dumbest thing, the dumbest thing ever. Um, but it might be worth it to push that asteroid up and get some more science, wouldn't it? <laughs> that's really dumb. That you could just take samples from the different asteroids. And actually, I'm now in high space, so it's not... I don't have to push it up far. Okay, we're only about two minutes away. I should really maybe start slowing down here. Actually, a minute and 20 seconds away. We found Lagee Kerman. She is still alive. And then you get all of these warnings from Kerbalism freaking out that she has absolutely no life support. But then they'll all go green in just a minute as Kerbalism realizes, oh, no, 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 we're good. We are good. See, here we go. Going green. The one thing you do have to be careful about, though, if you are rescuing people... And you have a life support mod installed, whether it's Kerbalism or whether it's something else, is when the vessel isn't rendered or hasn't been rendered for the first time, then 
it technically has no life support and your Kerbal can be up there indefinitely. But the moment uh, you come within rendering distance of the person you, re you rescue, then their uh, life support starts. Noticing as I time warp that this gets messed up. Oh, it drives me crazy. But, um, let's get closer. But the moment you render, they start using up life support. And if you mistakenly just, like, come close to your target and um, can't get to them within a specified amount of time, I think you got an hour or something. I don't know, actually. I should maybe take a look. But it is something to be cognizant of. Alright. We are about to pick ourselves up a brand new Kerbal. Actually, we can look at it from here, can't we? If I click on that, it probably says someone's pod here somewhere. Legee's pod, there we are. Legee has, oh, eight days. You got eight. Actually, the electric charge only has two and a half hours, so that's what's going to kill Legee. If you let this go two and a half hours, they run out of electricity and then stuff starts bad things start happening at that point. All right. Oh, I hate when I time warp this time gets messed up. I don't know. That seems to be something I never used to notice it before, but I've noticed it now repeatedly in 112 and I it really bugs me. And we're spraying Lagi with our exhaust. Sorry, Lagi. Try and point the wrong way here. All right. We'll come up here. No more. No more nuclear engine. We'll come up here. We'll do a park. We're going to try and minimize the amount of a spacewalk Lagi has to do here for a completely no reason. <laughs> I'm going to try and bring it in so it's just right above us here. For absolutely no reason other than I want to. Am I going to crash? I want to crash into it. Slow down, slow down. We're coming in kind of quick. There. Am I going to scrape the paint as I come by here? Slow down again. Well, everything's backwards when you're looking at the retrograde vector. So this is a Mark II command pod. Okay. Er, er. Relative stop. There we go. That's that's a park job. That's not bad. Okay, uh, let's let's get let's get to Lagi, and Lagi is a scientist, so let's get Lagi aboard. Uh, EVA, <laughs> check propellant. Notice that. Uh, oh, does she... that's weird. She has a parachute here, but that looks like one of those little science kit things. But it says if I click on it, it says parachute. So that's weird. I don't know what that is about. Okay, we're gonna come across to here. Grab and board. And now we're going to just do some quick engine maintenance because 
Uh, do, 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 do. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm going to turn off the pressure control. We're going to transfer. Uh, Dan. No, D Dan. No, Mike. Who's my scientist? Michael's my si our engineer. There we go. Transfer to here. Michael is going to EVA. Again, checking propellants. <laughs> and Michael is going to... Whoa! Come back. Just going to service this engine. Now, the engine is actually radioactive. <laughs> there is radiation that comes off the reactor, which is right there. So you kind of want to do this quick. We're going to get in close. We're going to inspect. It's reached its operational limits. We're going to service it. And it says engine is as good as new. We're going to inspect it again. And it says engine doesn't look used. Is this thing even turned on? Okay, there we go. So I think we fixed the engine. That's all there is to it. You do need an engineer. I think some of the cheaper engines you don't. But when you get into those nuclear ones, you do. Grab. Board. Board. Okay, pressurize. And get back up away from these low-life rescuee types.